Hi, my name is Amy Smart, and you're on the Solvers Channel. For Hitachi Cooling and Heating Professionals, welcome. Let me start by suggesting you contact Hitachi for more information about our zero harm policy, which we all follow at Johnson Controls Hitachi, to make sure you get home safely after each working day. And now, let's get to the point. Today, we will review the steps to follow for an installation of a residential system. Not only will we see the steps to follow, but we will also give you some of the tips that can be useful with R32. The tools for an R32 installation are practically the same as for a R410A. However, we must always check that the tools we are going to use are rated for use with R32. For the unit to function correctly, it is essential to have the right tools in optimal conditions, whether for installation, maintenance, or repairs. Before choosing the tools, we must check the installation location and the unit that we are going to install. In this case, we are going to install a one-to-one -one residential system with a split indoor unit. This means that I will need the following tools. The certified digital pressure gauge, flaring tools, pipe cutter, reamer, set of spanners, torque wrench, screwdrivers, pressure regulator, nitrogen bottle, leakage tester, vacuum pump, and vacuum gauge. The vacuum pump and the pressure gauge with which we are going to use must be certified to work with R32 since its pressure is higher than that of the R410A. And of course, we must not forget about safety. Gloves, goggles, and suitable shoes. First of all, you should check where the units are going to go, both indoor and outdoor, and prepare everything for installation. This step is very important, so take your time. For this topic, you have the installation manuals for both units in the equipment box to check to see if you need anything specific and that you have everything ready. In this case, we are going to do it all in our lab to explain every step correctly. It is important that when you find the right place to install the outdoor unit, make sure that there are no obstacles around the air inlet and the air outlet of the unit. Also make sure that the vibration isolators that which we are going to use are in proportion to the weight of the outdoor unit. Once we have placed the outdoor unit, we are going to connect the refrigeration system. To do this, we will use a new pipe and using the flaring tool, we will make flare fittings for a leak tight refrigeration circuit. Once the refrigeration connections have been made, we will continue with the electrical connections, both the power supply and the interconnection between the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. Again, we should consult the installation manuals to review the unit. As with the outdoor unit, we are going to make the refrigeration connections by flaring the piping. Once we have done this, it's time for the electrical connections again. When we have finished, we will check that our circuit is totally leak tight. To do this, we will do the leak and vacuum test and check that there are no leaks. To carry out the leak test, we are going to introduce nitrogen into the system. It is essential that we use a pressure regulator to reduce the pressure that we want to introduce to our circuit. So we are going to connect the pressure gauge to the nitrogen bottle and the manifold gauge. We regulate the pressure to 41 and a half kilos on the pressure regulator so that no more pressure is introduced into the cooling system. Once we have adjusted the pressure regulator, we open the manifold gauge and allow the nitrogen to enter our unit. When the pressure stabilizes, we close the manifold gauge and proceed to check for leaks using a soapy leak detector. As we can see, we have no leaks in the indoor unit nor the outdoor unit. So, Let's proceed to the next phase of the installation, the vacuum test. For this, the first thing we are going to have to do is to discharge the nitrogen from the pipes. Once we have done this, we connect the vacuum pump to the unit by means of the manifold gauge and the vacuum gauge and we perform the vacuum test until the vacuum gauge reads 0760. Once we have ensured that the vacuum is correct, 
and there are no leaks and that the entire refrigerant circuit is ready, stop the vacuum pump and open the valves and introduce the refrigerant supplied with our outdoor unit into the pipes. When we have opened the valves, we're going to look for leaks again using an electronic leak detector in both the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. As we can see, everything is fine and there are no leaks. So we should power up the circuit and start the system using the wire control in the mode and temperature that we choose to check that it functions correctly. Before we finish, let me remind you that the maintenance of the R32 equipment is very important. It doesn't differ much from what was required before. It is necessary to periodically clean the indoor unit filters to remove impurities and optimize the performance. To do this, we will open the device and remove the filters that can be cleaned with a damp cloth and easily put in place. The outdoor unit should be cleaned with compressed air or brush by a professional. The annual check of gas levels should be carried out to rule out possible leaks. An advantage of the use of R32 gas is that it allows refilling directly into the unit. As it is a pure gas, there is no risk of altering its proportionality as it was with the R410A, which is a gas of mixed composition. I hope this video was useful for you. Also, for other alarms and incidents, feel free to visit this YouTube channel or contact our call center that's always available for you for any questions you may have. A greeting to all fellow installers and remember, be professional and enjoy your work.